Okay, so let's continue about uh, the process API. So the main idea of the process API is it allows it provides a set of functions and uh, actually set of functions to manipulate processes and at this point we're looking into the fork system call that allows the operating system to create processes. Okay. And this is the code, uh, example code that illustrates the fork system call. Okay. If you look at the code, this is the main uh, call to printf which has out outputs the uh, hello world and it, it outputs the process ID of the parent process. Okay. And then uh, the fork is called here. So I, saw, I told you that the fork returns two times to the parent and to the child process. And uh, it returns zero to the child process and it returns uh, the process ID okay, to the uh, parent process here. It's not shown here, but it's basically the process ID of the child process. Right. It's returned in this point, but it's not uh, included in the code here. And we illustrated this last time in the uh, example. Okay, so I think this is in 1.3.2. CPU API, and it was illustrated in this example. Okay, so notice that this is the child so notice uh, the process ID so the importance of the process ID is it allows you to reference the process in the system you can think of the fork system call as if you're watching Naruto okay? yung Kage ano yan? Kage Bonshin okay? so shadow clo uh, clone so that's basically what happens when you fork a process okay? so in essence uh, that's what it does okay? and it was emphasized last time that the execution of the processes may not be uh, deterministic, meaning it's possible that the child process may run first before the, may complete first before the child process, so as shown in this example. So the order is different. And the process ID number, of course, there was a question last time, uh, what, will be the, uh, what will be the process ID number? So it depends right, on the state of the system. Right? So, uh, one way for uh, for uh, the system uh, call won't return un, uh, until the child has run. So this is the way system call. So what happens is when a process is created after the parent uh, after the parent is created, they will be treated as independent uh, processes. And what will happen is if you don't have the wait system call, if let's say the child uh, finishes. Uh, last so it's possible that the parent process will die first okay before the child uh, finishes so that, that we call that a zombie process so usually we have uh, uh, the wait system call that allows us that allows the parent process to wait for the child uh, process to finish first in order to be able to somehow the execution uh, of the parent and child process be deterministic Meaning, it all uh, the parent will always wait for the child to die, okay? So it's quite the opposite in, in real world, okay? So it is the child who waits for the parent to die, but in the case of process, it's the parent who waits for the child to die or to end this execution. So this code here is example, okay? So with uh, the only difference between the previous example code is the addition of this uh, wait uh, call here. So, of course, you can use the man page to uh, view the uh, different versions, different variants of the wait system call, but it shows here that is the typical. And you have the, it returns the PID of the uh, child process. Okay. And you can also wait for a specific, if you have uh, multiple forks, multiple children, okay, so 
it can be uh, you can use this particular uh, function here. Okay? So this is the P2 code. Okay? So notice that uh, the parent does not exit immediately. It waits for the child to finish first before uh, it executes. Uh, bef before it uh, moves to this exam, uh, to this ex to execute this instruction. Okay? So to muna and then this one. Right? So if you run that several times, the case will always be true okay? uh, that the the parent will wait for the the time to finish execution before it proceeds to the next instruction. All right? So that's the uh, wait system call. Other questions? Right? Because there are instances, uh, this is useful when you are running a command on the shell. When you type a command on the shell, you press enter, you don't get the command prompt immediately, right? So it, try, it waits for a while and then uh, the shell prompt appears. Okay? So basically, that is done via the wait, the shell. When you implement the shell, that is done via the wait system call. Okay? Now, if you put your process into the background, let's say you, you add ampersand at the end of the command, okay? you get the, sh the shell immediately, right? So that means that the shell does not wait for the uh, command to finish first before giving you a new shell. Did you observe that? Did you observe that? Okay, so that's what we mean by the ampersand. Okay, so run in the background, you get the, the parent process, which is the shell, does not wait for the, the command to finish. Okay. And uh, the next system call uh, that is uh, relevant is the exec system call. Okay. So in the Kagi Bunshin example, in our, uh, when, you make, when he makes a shadow clone, they all appear like him, right? right? However, I think there are instances wherein uh, a girl, a Naruto girl appears instead of the usual uh, Naruto, right? right? So that's the purpose of the exec system call. Right? So Naruto, uh, Naruto becomes uh, a girl. That's the idea of uh, exec. Right? So uh, the purpose of exec is uh, Let's say you have the parent process here. Okay. If this is the parent process, uh, it calls for. So what will happen is uh, another process will be created. Okay. So this is the exact, this is the child. And this is the parent. The child will be the exact copy of this parent process. So the, whatever code, remember that this is in memory. Right? In memory. So whatever code is in the parent process, that will be the code in the child process. Right? Uh, take note of that. However, it's also possible that instead of executing the Whatever is in the parent process, kung bagay yung clone ni Naruto, pwede siya mag-load ng something, ito yung ano, babaeng image ni Naruto, yun yung ilalagay niya doon sa contents niya. So that's what we mean by uh, exec. Okay? So run a program that is different from the calling program. Okay? Did you, did you get the idea? Okay? Uh, you, you will understand there. Bakit mo pinahirapan? Bakit nag-clone ka pa? Bakit kailangan mo mag-clone? Why not go directly create the process? Okay? There's a reason for that which we will discuss later. Okay? But the essence is, this is Naruto. Naruto yung lalaki. May babaeng Naruto. Pinalitan niya. That's basically what happens. Okay? So, the code is very similar to the previous one. So, in the child process, what happens is, instead of just executing whatever code here, it tries to load uh, a different program or a different, yes, a different program. A program is not yet running. In the name of WC, which is the word count command, and it prepares a, an array of strings that contains the parameters to the 
exec system call. Basically, the first argument will be the command. The second argument will be the parameter to the command, and then other arguments for the for the command. So usually it's the null to, to, to end the parameters. If you have more parameters, you have uh, a lot of code here, right? And then this is a variant of the exec system call. There are many variations of the exec system call. In the same way, the wait system call has a wait PID version. This one also has several versions. So. Uh, this is exec vp, okay? uh, v is for vector and I think P is for path. Okay? So you place the command here and then the arguments here. And then a good uh, code here is this one, printf. This shouldn't print out. Okay? If you don't call exec vp, what will happen is this code will print out because the memory image will not be loaded. Okay? It will not print place. But after the exec command, that line, uh, printf, it should, it shouldn't print out, will not be executed because the contents is replaced by whatever program is loaded. Okay? And uh, this is the result. Okay? So let's uh, see this uh, live code. Okay? So this is uh, p3. Okay? That's last p3. Okay? So notice that you did not see the code that says this uh, shouldn't print out, right? Because what happens is this code was ex what is this code? Right? What is this command? Right? So actually, if you look uh, for that executable in the file system, this command is located in slash usr slash bin slash word count and the way it was called, okay, the way the parameter was, uh, the way the parameter was formula was created was like this: wcp3.c. So, if you use, if you call that explicitly in the command command line, wcp3.c. This is what actually uh, it looks like in the command prompt. Right. Okay? So you see the output here. This is the output of the command. And this is the output of the command. Uh, this is the output of the call to exec v, and this is the output of the command when run in the command prompt. Did you get the idea? So, in essence, that's basically how a shell works. Okay? It accepts command, it parses the parameters here. So the parent process is the shell process, the bash process. It forks, calls exec based on this one. Can you get the idea? Okay. And then there are a lot, you can use the man uh, command to determine the di different variants of the exec system call. So you have here exec L, exec LP, what we used was exec VP. So uh, the parameter, what, what, uh, what did we use here? Exec VP, so you have the array here and uh, my args here. So, exec vp. So, this is the uh, specific command that we use. But I don't know if this is correct based on the example. Okay, you get the idea. But, uh, yeah, it's, quite, it's a string basically, constant string and the list of arguments. So, this is the version that was used in an example. Okay, so you can view the description here. Okay? So normally, uh, the return values of function, if it is zero, the function call is successful. If it is not zero, it can be uh, a failure. Okay. Do you follow? Okay. So that is the essence of uh, the exit system call. So it's basically used to create uh, processes. Now you might wonder, what happens at the start at the boot at the start of the loading of the operating system. If this is the mechanism to create processes, then there should be what you call a God process, wherein all other process will, uh, the Adam process, where other processes will, uh, will come from, right? Because this is the mechanism of how we create process, right? In designing an operating system, usually the first process is somehow created manually. 
So let's say the operating system is the, the kernel, the operating system kernel is the gun, okay? And then he creates Adam, the very first process, okay? And from Adam, other processes will come out. Okay? So traditionally, we have system five, uh, system five uh, init system. And if you read the literature, you will get init as the very first process with first ID zero. But when system D was introduced with a, a newer version, a modern version of uh, the initialization process, if you look at PS3, you will see that sino yung Adan sa, ano, sa Linux ngayon? Si system D. Okay? So from where all other processes will come out because of this system wall, okay? It's part of the POSIX standard, okay? Which is downloadable, uh, it's a standard uh, developed by, uh, I published in IEEE, so you can actually, I, you can download that. We have access to IEEE uh, documents, so you can read about the POSIX standard. So this one, uh, for some system, it's still in it, that is uh, shown here. So maybe I can show you something. It's an old version. Uh, so you see here, this is an old version of uh, Ubuntu. Okay? And the parent process here, Adam, is in it. Okay? It's the idea. So most modern distro use system D nowadays instead of the system 5 initialization process. Okay? But uh, I hope that's uh, uh, clear, okay? Okay, clear. So, uh, the next question to ask is, uh, why do we have this mechanism? But, uh, why do we have to make things uh, supposedly difficult? Why not, instead of forking, we directly call create a process? So it's because of the idea of redirection, okay? and most shells take advantage of this uh, mechanism, okay? uh, as, sh as shown in this example code. Okay? So this code here, let's look at the code. So what it does is uh, it forks, so there's no more code for outputting hello I'm something. And after forking, it should return uh, two times to the pair. If the fork is successful, it this is the child process. And then and in the parent process, it simply waits for the child to finish without displaying anything. Okay? But the code here is in the child process, this is what happens. It closes the std out file now. File no. Remember when we took uh, when we look at the unistd.h in the folder slash user inclu include. So you have this unistd here. So this uh, constant uh, actually this, this uh, hash defined is defined there, right? which is the uh, as a number file descriptor for the standard output of the screen. So what happens in the child process? It close uh, it close that meaning it. Uh, for example, uh, so there is. Uh, one of the, if this is a PCB for the parent process, one of the fields there is the STD out. Oh, it's one of the fields in the uh, PCB. Now it is inherited by the child process. There is also STD out here. Now, during the execution of the child process, it close this. Uh, STD out. So there is no output to the screen. Okay? Then right after that, there is a call to open. Okay? Open the open call will uh, the open call here will uh, create this file. Okay? So create if it does not exist, read only, uh, write only, okay? truncate, and other options. Okay? So this is a, a particular file that will be created. Okay? And then it calls exec. So they did the code in the previous uh, example. Right? 
okay? And this is what will happen. Okay? So, it's kind of a magic uh, mechanism, magical mechanism. So, supposedly, if you did not close the STD out, the contents will be displayed on the output of the WC command will be displayed to the screen. However, at this point, no output was created. Instead, you will see that a new file was created. Okay? So you see here that a new file was created. Okay? And if we display that, the contents of that, the same output. You get the idea? So, you might wonder, where in the code, where in the code did that happen? Okay. Supposedly, when you use the open, uh, open system call, it should return uh, the file descriptor, right, that you can use for write. Okay. Now, one of the interesting behavior of the open system call is, it starts looking for available file descriptors starting from zero. Okay. Since, when, since you close uh, std out file node, okay, uh, you can think of the open file descriptor some, something like this for each process. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is, uh, let's say it's open, 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 right? When you close the uh, STD out, right? And then you call the open system call, right? It will start looking for available file descriptor at the start. So it will consult this. Uh, let's say this is the file descriptor array. Is file descriptor zero used? Since you closed it, it's not used. Okay? So it will use that in this uh, open uh, statement. Can you get the idea? So that's what you mean by that. All right? Are there questions? Okay, so that ends the topic on the process API. Okay? So most operate uh, you have just have to remember the combo for wait exec for wait exec so when you go to job interviews and uh, you are asked to describe how our process created in a Linux operating system you should be able to describe this process okay that will be a very useful knowledge okay so that ends the chapter now we move on to uh, the next part, which is uh, okay. I think uh, no, I, I failed to mention kill the kill command. Right? The kill command is uh, also a, another uh, command okay, to kill processes. This is very useful uh, if you're working on the command line and you some programs behave un uh, unexpectedly. You have to be able to kill them or to terminate them. Unlike in Windows, you simply go to the task manager, right click on the uh, offending uh, service or process, and then terminate. But how do you do that in Linux? Okay? For example, your window suddenly, let's say your open office or LibreOffice suddenly freeze. Okay? How do you uh, restore that? Or your Firefox uh, stop? How do you do that? So you open a terminal and then you identify the process ID of the process. Normally, when my 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 Firefox hangs, uh, I use ps minus a grep Firefox, okay, and I will be able to get the process ID here. So I can type kill, uh, and then the process ID one three four two five. Why okay, it will disappear? Now sometimes that will not, that will fail. That will fail. So I have to forcefully kill them using minus nine. Okay, so it will. Uh, Sabihan, ima masakar niya talaga. Ayaw mo ah. 
Okay, ganun yung may idea. So, the, the, the kill command simply tells the process gently, hey, can you kill yourself? But if that process cannot kill itself because some because it's already a crazy, okay, just kill them by forcing them to by killing the process itself. So the allocating this, okay, you don't you don't want to listen to me, you don't want to kill yourself, I'll kill you. Something like that. So that's how it's done. And this is usually done using signals. Okay? Uh, there is a system call called signal. So the signal actually, a process will be able will be able to receive events from the operating system. That's why let's say if you have an infinite a program that is uh, entered an infinite loop, you can actually press Control C, right, to terminate the program, right? Okay. So what happens is most processes when uh, Linux spawns processes, right, or in Unix systems, right, there is a default signal handler. Such that when you press Control C, the shell will send a message to that process that uh, it will receive using the signal handler, and it depends on the signal that is being sent. That is being sent to the process. So we have a lot of uh, different signals. So. so we have here different signals, right? So. For example, the minus nine that I uh, tell, told you a while ago, kill minus nine plus ID, this is the sig kill uh, uh, signal. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just sending this pro I'm sending Firefox. I'm, I'm killing you right now. That's the idea. The other one by default, the kill is, I think it's uh, terminate. Uh, is it sig term? Uh, I forgot the, co uh, the correct uh, value for that particular number. So remember, when you when the process is run, right, it can receive signals. Right? If your parent process is the shell, you run a hello world program that enters an inf infinite loop. If you press Control C, you can regain back control of the shell. Okay? Or you can press Control Z. Right? What will happen is the process will stop and you gain control of the shell and then you can kill that process or and then you can use FG to enable that process again. Right? Okay, it stops shell. So background process. Right? So those are important uh, tools that uh, you can uh, use uh, when some of the processes in your Linux system uh, misbehave. Uh, misbehave. Okay, so that's that. So the next chapter in our textbook is uh, limited direct execution. So what is this limited direct execution? Okay. Uh, so essentially one of the roles of the operating system is for you to be able to execute programs. Okay. So you have your processor, uh, it has an instruction set, it is able to execute uh, machine language, right? Now, how does the operating system allow you to do that, right? So, even without the operating system, as long as you can put the instructions in the main memory and then adjust the program counter register to point to the instruction in the memory to execute, you can actually execute programs. But that's quite tedious. So, actually, in the lab later, Okay. Uh, you're going to examine about the bootloading process. Right? This is what you're going to do. Right after the BIOS boots, it has to jump to the uh, bootloader and eventually the kernel. So that's how the transition happens. So how does the operating uh, does, that, uh, does that? So how to efficiently virtualize the CPU with control? So you have a single CPU and you have a lot of programs that will execute, you want to execute on the CPU, so you need to do some time sharing, right? Okay. So time sharing is important. Uh, you have to swap processes in and out of the CPU or program instructions, right? And there are two issues that must be addressed when it comes to virtualizing this uh, CPU via time sharing. 
The first one is uh, performance. This issue is answers the question, how can we implement virtualization without adding excessive overhead to the system? Right? So we have this, uh, this process list here, and this is our CPU here, okay. or zero. Right? We move this here. After some time, we take this out, and then we move this on this uh, the CPU. So, that's perform. How do we do that efficiently? Right. Second, uh, control. How can we run processes efficiently while retaining control over the CPU? Right. Uh, in this example on the board, these are uh, user processes, meaning they are they have been created after the operating system was loaded. Right. The ideal thing is after the operating has loaded and the, oper the operating system has loaded and it chose this particular process to run on the CPU, what it wants to do is uh, to let this child process do whatever uh, it wants to do on the CPU, do it, uh, perform any instruction that it likes. Right? However, that can be problematic later, especially if there are a lot of other processes running that are supposed to run on the CPU. Okay? If you allow this child process to control everything in the CPU, what will happen to the other processes? Okay? So that's why the operating system should have some form of control. Okay? Na, kung baga parang, if this particular process is misbehaving, there should be uh, someone who will be able to hey, that process is misbehaving, you should be removed from the CPU, right? So, you can think of a uh, GAD process. Let's call it the GAD process. Which is the kernel, the operating system kernel, right? You have a single kernel, and you can have as many other processes that you like, right? And then, it is the kernel who will be controlling the use of the CPU. So you can think of the kernel as of, uh, the GAD process. Right? The GAD process. Right? Ayong bahala dyan. Right? So si GAD, the creation of first process, sabihin natin, the name in it, right? or system D. Diba si God, ang ginawa niya ay create niya si Adam from the manually, ano yan? Lupa ba yun or something? Hindi ko maalala eh. So lupa, so si init process. Tapos, ito yung sabihin, si Adam. Yung analogy natin. Tapos si Adam, lonely. Okay? So ginawa ni God si Eve. Okay? So nung ginawa ni uh, si Adam, ginawa ni si Eve, nandun na yung snake. Ano bang sword? Paano ba niya ba si Snake dito? Ah, siguro, dahil kay Snake, nagkaroon ng spawning, no, ano, additional processes. Okay? So, nagkaroon niya... Uh, basta, nalimutan ko na. By Old Testament Genesis. Okay? So, ito yung sequence para madali yung matandaan. Now, God oversees everything. This is the earth. Sabihin natin. This is the earth. Okay? So, process I created. You take care of the earth. Okay? And if some of the processes must behave, okay, then God will punish you or something like that. Or, but God does not punish in reality. So, that's, you get the idea? So, performance. So, uh, God wants the processes to be able to live life fully, right? So, to be, make efficient use of the resources. Right? And also, God should be in control, right? Because to say, uh, uh, you sin or something like that, you will be punished, okay? Something like that. Okay, get the idea? And eventually, all processes die, okay? All processes die, okay? And when you power off the computer, what will happen? It's the end of the world, okay? <laughs> something like that, right? You get the analogy so that uh, uh, you will be able to uh, uh, visualize how things work. And the creation of 
that processes is done by forking. Okay. So it's a different thing if you're familiar with the word fork. Okay. So uh, next is so how does the OS perform those things? Uh, uh, perform uh, achieving performance, high performance and uh, exercising control. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the idea of direct execution, as I mentioned the Vandalo, is just let the child do whatever it wants on the CPU. Think of this as free will. Okay? So the child process, free will, do whatever it wants on the, on the CPU. Okay? So what happens is the OS will create an entry uh, uh, for the process list, right? So you will have the process list. This one is the process list. So say, let's say you cre uh, the OS created uh, a new process in it, and then this shell created this child process, right? It will allocate the memory for the program, load the program into the memory, set up the stack with argc and argv. These are command line arguments. So a while ago, you have wc p4. That a P3, uh, P, P4.C, right? which is basically the argc arc and argv. Right? Then clear the registers and execute the main function. Right? So all of these things are done in the context of the operating system. Right? And then when main is called, it is now uh, allowing the to do whatever it wants with the CPU. Okay, you get the idea? And then after the last line of the main function, control will be transferred back to the uh, OS and then the free memory will process the new from You can think of this as uh, the way a child is born. So create an entry for the process list. So the God process, uh, di ba sa, sa langit yata meron si San Pedro, di ba? Pag papasok ka na sa heaven, may listahan siya ng mga pangalan, di ba? Okay. So you can think of the listahan ng mga pangalan ni San Pedro as the process list. Okay. So pinanganak ka, binautismuhan ka, napasama ka dun sa listahan ng ano, ng Uh, ni San Pedro. Tama? Okay. So, nabuhay ka. Sinigyan ka ng buhay. Uh, katawang lupa. Sabihin natin, sis. Katawang lupa nandito eh. Okay. So, uh, katawang lupa. Sinigyan ng lupa. Uh, okay. And then, ito na yung uh, namumuhay ka na. Siguro, binigyan ka ng, ano, ng talento or ano ba nung meron ka. Okay. RC, RV. And then, reset. Right? So, bata ka pa, wala pa na lang, you will be molded into something. Right? And then, ito, lumay ka na, nais mong tuning malaya. Okay? Dito ka na ngayon. Okay? So, you're doing everything. And then, you die. Okay? When you die, you will be harvested. Okay? Reap, at tawag doon sa ano? Final harvest. Ganun, ganun. Okay? And then, okay? You're done. Your life has ended. Okay? Is that uh, clear? So without limits on running programs, the o OS wouldn't be in control of anything and thus would just be a library. Okay? So it is the OS, the God process that controls everything. Okay? In this. Uh, now how does it does that? Pan? So you might wonder, how does the operating system gain gains control if If it allows the if it allows the child process to run freely, okay. so what will happen? How? Paano yung ginagawa yun? Okay. So hindi ba o nagkasala yung ano? Nagkasala yung um, uh, at tawag dito yung process. Uh, bago kasi ang mamatay, may mga inaccess na sa ibang memory or kung ano ano kana bawal dapat. Okay. Salanan yun. Ano gagawin? Paano magiging control? Paano magkakaroon ng control si ano si uh, God process? Diyan papasok na yung pinatawag na, later we talk about timer, right? the timer interrupt. 
Yung timer interrupt ng yung tingin siguro kasi ganun na Holy Spirit. So it's always there and then it ticks and then it calls back, it transfer control back to the uh, God process. Okay? So baka iba na yung tinuturo ko sa inyo. So, but you get the analogy, right? So baka nag-replace na ako sa inyo. But you get the analogy if you are familiar with uh, that idea. Okay? So that will be all for now. Uh, see you next uh, meeting. Okay. Later, later. See you in the lab. Okay? So, ah, assembly language tayo. 16 with assembly language real mode. Okay. So please pass your paper and uh, uh, we'll stop here.